Let's imagine now that we are looking at some general collision, not necessarily in the frame, uh, the uh, center of mass frame, and it is an inelastic collision, which means the internal forces are not conservative, they are non-conservative forces. Let's see what we can figure out about the, uh, the results of this collision. Let's start out with uh, an, a mass M1 moving at V1 initial, and M2 moving at V2 initial, but let's imagine we don't know what the final situation is. We're trying to figure that out. We're trying to determine what can we say about the final situation. Well, one thing we can do is we can calculate the initial momentum, the total initial momentum, P initial, which is P1 initial plus P2 initial, which is going to be M1V1 initial plus M2V2 initial. And then what... What can we say about the final momentum? Well, remember, the total momentum only depends on the external forces, not the internal forces. As long as there are still no external forces, or at least they are negligible, like the same assumption we had for the elastic collision, then the total momentum is not going to change. So one thing we know is that the total final momentum Whatever M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final is, it's got to be equal to the initial total momentum. The total momentum is conserved. Well, what about the velocity of the center of mass? Remember, the velocity of the center of mass will equal the total momentum divided by the mass. Well, what's the final velocity of the center of mass? The, this will be, say, the initial. What's the final velocity of the center of mass? That would be P final over the total mass, but P final is the same as P initial, and so it's the same as the, whoops, sorry, as the velocity of the center of mass initially. So the center of mass is going to maintain a constant motion. It's not going to change. What about the kinetic energies? Well, we can determine the uh, total kinetic energy which would be 1 half m1 v1 initial squared plus 1 half m2 v2 initial squared. But we know that we can also write that as a combination of two terms. The kinetic energy of the center of mass initially plus the relative kinetic energy initially. Now, what was the kinetic energy of the center of mass? That was, remember, 1 half times the total mass times the velocity of the center of mass squared. But the center of mass initially is the same as the center of mass velocity finally, which means the kinetic energy of the center of mass initially is going to equal the kinetic energy of the center of mass finally. So that is just going to be the kinetic energy of the center of mass. Whatever it starts out with will end up with the same kinetic energy of the center of mass finally. Well, that can't change. So apparently, even with non-conservative, internal forces, we cannot lose that kinetic energy of the center of mass. What about the relative kinetic energy? That is the motion of the objects relative to the center of mass. That is the kinetic energy that we can lose. By having non-conservative internal forces, that's the kinetic energy that can uh, either decrease to a lower value or can be lost completely. So, we can lose kinetic energy in the motion, but that kinetic energy cannot come from the motion of the center of mass. That's, that ultimately is because momentum has to be conserved. It, with with uh, conservative or non-conservative internal forces, momentum is conserved, so that cannot change. It's this part where we can actually lose the kinetic energy. Well, let's stick some numbers in and let's take a look at that and see how that works out. So here we have another collision where M1 is 6 kilograms, M2 is 4 kilograms, V1 initial is 8 meters per second, V2 initial is 3 meters per second. So the initial situation is exactly the same as our elastic collision. However, our final situation is a little bit different. We still have the 6 and 4 kilogram masses, but now V1 final is 5 meters per second and V2 final is 7.5 meters per second. Let's see what kind of effect this has on our results. So let's go through this exactly the way we did before with the elastic collision, 
We'll look at the initial situation, do some calculations, then we'll look at the final situation, do some calculations, then we'll switch to the center of mass frame and see what we get there as well. Okay, so let's get this going. What is the total initial momentum? Total initial momentum will still be uh, momentum one initial plus momentum two initial, which will be M1, six kilograms, times V1 initial, eight meters per second, plus M2, four kilograms, times V2 initial, three meters per second. What do we get? We get six times eight, 48, kilogram meters per second plus 4 times 3, 12 kilogram meters per second equals 60 kilogram meters per second. Exactly what we got before and exactly as we would expect because the initial situation is exactly the same. We, we could just write down the results but I think it would, it, it doesn't hurt kind of going over things again even if they're the same numbers. So let's, uh, let's keep going. What is our uh, velocity for the center of mass. The velocity for the center of mass initially is the total initial momentum divided by the total mass. In other words, 60 kilogram meters per second divided by 6 plus 4, 10 kilograms equals 6 meters per second. So, center of mass still moving to the right, six, positive 6 meters per second. What is our initial kinetic energy? That will be the kinetic energy of the first mass, one half times six kilograms times V1 initial squared, eight meters per second squared, plus one half times M2, four kilograms times V2 initial, three meters per second squared. And what do we get? We get uh, the kinetic energy of the first mass is 192 joules. Kinetic energy of the second mass is 18 joules, giving us a total of 210 joules. Okay, same initial kinetic energy. What is the kinetic energy of the center of mass? Initially, again, that's going to be one half times the total mass times the velocity of the center of mass squared, which is one half times six plus four, 10 kilograms times up oh, here, six meters per second squared, and we get 180 joules, okay? And then, one more, what is the uh, VREL initially? That is V2 initial, three meters per second, minus V1 initial, eight meters per second, which is, again, negative five meters per second. Okay, all should be very, very familiar, exactly the same values that we got when we were looking at the elastic collision. All right, let's put these over here, and let's do the same calculations for the final situation. And now for the final situation. What is the total final momentum? See if you can think if you can guess, or see if you can guess what the results are going to be at least approximately, or at least uh, what kind of values should we expect? What do you think is going to be the final total momentum? Well, let's see. So we're going to get the uh, momentum of mass one, so six kilograms times five meters per second, plus four kilograms times 7.5 meters per second, which gives us 30 kilogram meters per second plus 4 times 7.5, that is 30 kilogram meters per second for a total of 60 kilogram meters per second. Is that what you guessed? Hopefully. What is that? That is the total final momentum, but it is also the total initial momentum. So what do we find? Momentum is conserved, as we would expect. Okay. What is then the final velocity of the center of mass? Well, we have the same total momentum. We're going to end up with the same velocity for the center of mass, 6 meters per second. Okay? Is that what you guessed? Hopefully it was. What about the uh, final kinetic energy? K final. What's that? So we're going to get 1 half times 6 kilograms times 5 meters per second squared plus 1 half times 4 kilograms times 7.5 meters per second squared. What do we get? One half six times five squared is 75 joules. 
1 half times 4 times 7.5 squared is 112.5 joules for a total of 187.5 joules. What do we notice? Is that what you guessed for an inelastic collision? Notice the total final kinetic energy is not equal to the total initial kinetic energy. 210 joules to 187.5 joules, we lost some energy. How much? Uh, let's see, about 22.5, uh, 22.5 joules, I think, something like that. So we lost some energy. Okay, what is the uh, V rel? V rel final? V rel final will be V2 final, 7.5 meters per second, minus um, V1 final, 5 meters per second. 7.5 minus 5 is 2.5 meters per second. And what do we notice? Our final relative velocity is not the negative of the initial relative velocity. Negative 5 to not 5, but 2.5. The masses are not moving apart as fast as they came together. So what happened here? Qualitatively, we've got these masses coming together quickly and then moving apart separately. Some of the energy was lost. Some of the kinetic energy was lost. However, the momentum was not. Okay, very good. We will come back to these relative velocities because that is one way that we will use to measure how inelastic the collision was. The greater the difference between these will help us know just how much kinetic energy is lost. Okay, let's... Um, Let's take a look at this in the center of mass frame. Ah, so what are we going to do? What is the center of mass frame? Let's do that calculation first. So, uh, let's switch colors here. What is the velocity of the center of mass? It is 6 meters per second. So what, our, what are our new velocities? Remember, the u velocities are the v velocities minus the velocity of the center of mass. So, what's the velocity of the center of mass? 6 meters per second. So we have to take all of our velocities and subtract 6. So what do we get? U1 initial will be 8 minus 6, or 2 meters per second. U2 initial will be 3 meters per second minus 6, which is negative 3 meters per second. Hopefully you recognize those. They are exactly the same uh, U velocities that we had initially for the elastic collision, because we have the same situation initially. And the velocity of the center of mass hasn't changed. What about our final situation? Again, subtracting 6, we'll have u1 final equals 5 minus 6, which is negative 1 meters per second. And u2 final will be 7.5 minus 6, which is 1.5. 1.5 meters per second. Okay, so let's go back, let's do this over with our new u velocities and do the calculations and see what we get. 